I don't know yet. Depends on how good you are. Um, listen, guys, thanks for coming along today. We're going to talk about project preset. But before we want to kick or before we kick off, I just want to give you like an overview of a couple of things. And um, so as you know, the other day, um, we've been looking at places. We've been trying to find new locations for the gym. It was up in the group today. Um, so if anyone does happen to hear off somewhere about five to six thousand square feet, not too far away from here, please just let myself, Luke or Darren know because we're really out of session. Um, that's Darren Way, I think, if you haven't met him before. Uh, speaking of Darren Liv, um, like the other thing about Redford is, it, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that you don't see. Um, there's a lot that goes into the admin, to the coaching, to the programming, just <coughs> keeping everything together, especially as the gym grows. Um, and I just wanted to take a minute to publicly acknowledge Luke and Dara, and say how valuable they all are. Still get a mention though, don't worry. And a small little topic of appreciation. Yeah, that was unexpected. Oh, yeah, right? Plastic cups, plastic cups. Yeah, that's it. Got his own plastic reception. And of course, you know, I mentioned Luke and Dara because they're sitting here in front of me, but obviously he stays absent tonight, he had other things on. Uh, so you'll probably see the recording, so hello, Steve. Uh, you're absolutely the same as Luke and Dara in your own special, unique way. <laughs> um, and there actually is Steve's favourite, because you all know how much Steve loves whiskey, so this is here for you. <laughs> right, enough of that bullshit. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so project reset. Um, I just want to tell you a little story, okay? So once upon a time, there was a guy called Steve, and Every day Steve said, today will be different. Today's the day I'm finally going to get in shape. And then one day, Steve joined a gym. And he does what you always do. When you join a gym, he starts researching. So because of that, he flipped open Google. He started searching, he looked for fitness, he looked for health, he looked for how to lose weight and how to lose fat. He found paleo, he found if it fits your macros, weightlifting, powerlifting, dieting, training, he found everything. Poor Steve got so fucking confused, he didn't know what to do. Okay, we've all been there where we have too much information in front of us and we've no idea where to go with it. It's paralysis by analysis. So, poor Steve got so frustrated he didn't do anything, he got pissed off and he said, I'm never gonna lose weight, I'm never gonna be happy, I'm never going to change. Until so finally he got a plan that was so freaking easy to follow, it was so simple and straightforward, he didn't have to think anymore. All he had to do was FDDP. And you know what FDDP stands for? Really? Follow the damn plan, yeah. And that plan is Project Reset. Essentially what it is, is a complete solution for all your fat loss needs. Um, and again, as members, you're all getting it free. I'm going to talk you through exactly what we need to cover to make it happen. Your health and fitness is like a pyramid. And you build the biggest pyramid and you build the best pyramid by having the widest base. It's like a house. If you want to build a solid house, you've got to dig deep, deep foundations. If you want a tall pyramid, you need to build a wide base. So that all starts with the bottom level here, which is sleep, recovery, nutrition, and stress management. Without those, everything else that comes up the pyramid <coughs> is going to get screwed over. Because think about it. Work capacity, hypertrophy, strength, power, they're all essentially training, lifting weights and getting fitter. Stop laughing. No. Nope. <laughs> um, and the problem with that is you've got to recover because training is essentially breaking your body down. It's taking yourself apart to build yourself back up fitter and stronger, right? You all know what Dom's feels like after a training session. That's your body trying to recover. But if you don't have the most important element of all this, and that is sleep, recovery, nutrition, and stress management, you're on a very quick road to nowhere. So the priority for the next six weeks becomes getting this stuff right first, and then all of this stuff will flow on without any hassle at all. Honestly, almost any training program done right will get you to the point of weight loss and muscle gain. <coughs> the hardest part is finding nutrition, um, nutrition principles and nutrition plan you can stick to that doesn't get thrown out the window after the first weekend on the pits. It happens everywhere, right? So, sleep, nutrition, recovery, stress management. Movement quality, mobility, flexibility, how well do you move, and how good do your exercises look? Because, look, we've all had it where we want to just put the head down and go hard at stuff. Like, oh, your push-ups are tired, I'll just put the range of motion. My squats don't feel so great anymore, my legs are a little bit stiff, I won't go down as far. But all that does is create poor movement quality, which leads to uneven loading on joints, it leads to less stimulation on the muscle, and when that doesn't get there, 
you're sacrificing your training, you're sacrificing your gains. What's the point of even showing up with that case? Work capacity is simply your ability to get stuff done during training sessions. So it's like your cardiovascular fitness. For anyone in, in DC, or I think you the guys in GM have been doing it as well for the last week, those complexes, have you noticed? DC, because we've been doing it like two and a half weeks now, but you notice like how much quicker your work capacity improves, right? Like you feel like it doesn't necessarily get easier, but you get better able to handle it. And all that is, is your work capacity going up, you get more quality work done in sessions, that means you end up fitter, it means you end up stronger, you're healthier, you drop more fat and you build more muscle, which is really the goal of training. And that's where <coughs> the next couple of levels come in, hypertrophy, strength and power, which is basically how you look. We don't need to worry about that too much for today, because it's again these parts of the pyramid that are most important. The top three levels, you'll cover off just by showing up the training. So, what are we talking about on Project Reset? We need to talk about your macro and your calorie guidelines. Deliver a complete nutrition plan for cheat days. Everyone loves cheat days. Have every workout laid out for you. The option of up to six additional at home sprint or gym workouts. Try and get like two in, maybe six is a little bit outrageous. A bulletproof core training plan and then daily mobility workouts and videos to target your tightest areas and help reduce DOM, or reduce, reduce DOMs. Um, so when we talk about macros and calories, what we're really talking about is how much energy you take in versus the energy you put out. So it's like, you know, filling up your tank with petrol. If you put in, can everyone see this okay by the way? Yeah. If you put in too much petrol into your car, it overflows. It comes rushing out of the fuel cap and it just spills out on the floor. Uh, it doesn't really happen that way with your body, it just spills out over your belt. So. If you're overweight or if you've been gaining fat, it's simply you've got this calorie or energy balance equation <coughs> wrong. So when we talk about an energy balance equation, we mean there's three components. So you're changing body stores, whether you lose fat, gain muscle, or how your physical appearance changes is dependent on three things. Number one, your basal metabolic rate. So we all have like slightly varying ones. So depending on your age, your sex, your height, um, and how physically active you are, you have a different number. But let's say just to exist, so you can wake up each day, not fall apart and not die, you need 2,000 calories. Okay, if you lay in bed all day, your body would need 2,000 calories just to keep ticking over. Make sense? Okay, so that's number one. The next component within your basal metabolic rate is, if you get up and move about, like let's say you get up to go to the bathroom, that requires energy. You get up to go and make breakfast and then go to the office. When you get to the office, you get up and go and get a coffee, you gotta to walk to the bus, you gotta walk home all requiring energy. So that increases your basal rate by probably 1.2, maybe 1.3. So you're now at you know, 27, 28, or 2400 calories just to get by. You add your training in on top of that, which is your thermic effect of activity. So how much energy you burn while training. Let's say three sessions a week at about 600 calories per session. That's 1800 calories a week from training. Divide that by seven, you get like what, 250? Somewhere around there. Add it onto your basal metabolic rate, that's about 2,600 calories. So that's 2,600 calories just to maintain your body weight, okay? Not to go up, not to go down. So somewhere in that range is where you maintain body weight. So for example, that might be the 100 plus kilo goal. I know if I'm not eating 2,600 calories, I'm losing weight. The cool thing for me is it means I get a lot of food. Ahem. But you need to find out your own one. <coughs> The calorie numbers we have here, and you'll get the handouts delivered to you afterwards, are your starting point for weight loss. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere in this range. So if your goal is to lean up and to drop fat, and you're 60 to 65 kilos, you need to be taking in about 1500 or 1600 calories. If you're 95 to 100 kilos, you need to be taking in about 2500 calories per day to lose weight. If you take in substantially more than that, you go nowhere. If you take in substantially less, what's going to happen is you're going to just fall apart. Like who's tried crash dieting before? Honestly, yeah. You can fall, put your hands up, you're all liars. Um, and it works for like a week or it works for two weeks. But after that, like as soon as you stop and as soon as you go back to eating normally, the weight falls right back on again and you regain it all plus interest. <clears throat> so all the hard work you've done now is just wasted because you haven't, essentially you haven't done it the right way. And the right way is to do it slowly and steadily. And then on the back side of this, once we finish, we're going to have to talk about returning to maintenance. Because what you see with all of these diet plans is, somebody starts here eating loads of food, and over the six weeks they drop down <coughs> to the point where they're not eating very much food anymore. And it's taken like six weeks to get there, and then on 
Week seven, day one, they go right back to where they were and their body just can't handle it and it regains all the fat it's lost. So if you think about coming down over a period of time, you also need to start to come back up over a similar period. Does that make sense? It's called a reverse guide. So the other calorie guidelines we're gonna look at, and then we've got certain protein, fat, and carbohydrate numbers as well, which we'll dig into in a little bit. Um, carbohydrates are not evil. Carbohydrates are not necessarily making you fat. It's just a misallocation of them within the context of your daily diet. If you eat, you know, 159 grams of carbs through Mars bars, that's, <laughs> it's a whole lot different than 159 grams of carbs through sweet potato. Like on a molecular level, it's probably not too dissimilar, but the difference between doing this with sweet potatoes and doing it with a Mars bar is probably two Mars bars versus about 20 sweet potatoes. So it's just a volume of food you won't be able to consume. So good quality carbs are what matters, and we're gonna talk about that when we talk about nutrition. So food sources, what we're looking at mostly is lean white meat, and there's a reason for that, and I'll tell you why in a second. It's not that red meat is evil. Um, so protein, looking mainly from chicken breast, chicken thighs and legs, turkey breast to take the skin off, uh, lean turkey mince, pork chops, tuna steak, white fish, preferably like good quality, you know, organic, free range, buzzword, heavy food. Um, but if you're going from eating like chicken drumsticks from KFC to non-grass-fed, non-organic chicken fillets, you've made a huge step in the right direction. So don't worry too much if, uh, if that's the way you go. We're going to talk about starchy carbs. So potatoes, sweet potatoes, butternut squash, uh, legumes, things like kidney beans and beans, corn, carrots, parsnips, oats, rice and quinoa. Um, essentially root vegetables. Your normal vegetables become colorful stuff. So leafy greens like broccoli, cauliflower, and kale and the likes, mushrooms, peppers. Look, I'm not gonna read the list off. You've all got eyes, you can all see it. And um, we're gonna send these out as part of the package um, tomorrow. With this, if your food sources <coughs> don't make sense, if you see something like vegetables and you wanna have what's a really obvious one that's off there? Like Brussels sprouts. I didn't put them down because I hate them. Um, but let's say, let's say you want to have Brussels sprouts, you can have Brussels sprouts, okay? Use common sense, stick to the spirit of it, okay? It's not prescriptive, but it's a very strong indicator on what you should do. So